All right, welcome back to the next video in our MVM Top 50 sequence. I'm here, yeah. Ryan, with Jeremy yes. Howard today as we do our 30, 30 through 21. 21. This yeah. is... We're right in the middle of our list. We are here. like in a, we're in the, the heart of the list. Oh, the list. heart like, of the list. Like, we're in like, the heart. Yeah, right like, this the is like, the, this is the ones that like, some of these I was like, ah, top 20. Ah. Yeah, this was I the, started like making some moves. Uh -huh. I was getting all sentimental about some of these, you know. Like, some of these I was like, man, I almost could put these in my top, top 10, 20, yeah, top 20. Yeah. It gets, it gets tightness. It gets so, tightness. So, so let's just jump right in with our number 30. Number 30. For me, now I actually kind of combined. Two oh games boy. in it, a little oh bit. Boy. So here we go. My number thirty is Snowdonia. Okay. Well, is, well, well. Okay. It's a fantastic game. Okay. Snowdonia has it a is. lot of things I like. It's very satisfying with the worker placement. Yes, it Moving is. along that track and all of the different modules, especially yes. if you have that Snowdonia Deluxe set that has yep. all those different modules all mixed in. All of it. I, I love it. I think it's a very satisfying game. The reason I combine it is because Alubari, a nice cup of yes. tea, came out. Which really could have been a Snowdonia module. Yes. It's it's basically a module writ large. Like it's a giant. It was just a module and it made it into a board game. So yeah, I, I'm right. kind of combining those together. But yep. Snowdonia, that's my number thirty. Yeah, one of my favorite games. It's, it's actually great. on my list. Well, well spoiler you can, alert. you can watch our. You can Ryan. What you can do is watch my that's recording true. of my video. All right, and so can you. All right, here we go. Anyway. <laughs> Ruik Dawn of Kiev is mine. Oh, uh, yeah. So Ruik yeah. is one of my favorites. It's designed by my friend, Stan Kordonsky. Uh, really great designer. Uh, Dice Hospital. Fantastic. Uh, he's got Resurgence the resurgence. Coming he happens out. to like a lot. I do. I uh, love of it. Of course, I love it, too. Uh, he's got some a couple other designs. But this one specifically, with this, it has this thing to it where you're basically in an area control or area influence thing in uh, Russia, Kiev. But you are these leaders, and you're trying to uh, win on these auction boards. And it's kind of an interesting action selection system where you're taking workers and you're adding them and sliding others down by uh, posting higher bids. But it also takes away from other actions. So you really got to make some interesting choices every time. I haven't seen that in a game up until that moment. Uh, but that one is the gift that keeps on giving because when they add that stone blade expansion, I was just going to so ask many, about that. They do so many other things with that design. He he, he got every like, every bit of life force out of that design, and uh, it's still one of my favorite games. It just to this day, and it's such a high quality product. Uh, Solo is really good. Yeah, I have not played the expansion yet. Oh my goodness! I yeah, need that's, that's one. That's, it probably yeah, would have been maybe on my top fifty does, if I, mean, I got to play it some more. You can take people put them in jail. You can. I mean, they just all these different types of leader things you can do. I, it's really good. I want to check it out. Yeah. All right. What is this? Twenty nine. My twenty nine is first class. First class. Wow. The, yeah. yeah. First okay. class is so good. Yeah, it's a like, good one. When when you see my list, uh, a lot of games that I love. And I'll talk about this in every video probably. Right. Is that combo idea, the, that yeah. feeling of really satisfying turns. First class, you're doing combos like crazy. This is a train game. Yeah. It's actually from the same designer as Russian Railroads. Okay. And Legend is, and this is kind of, you know, a little bit of truth here. Some of this stuff was originally part of Russian Railroads, but it, he took it out and actually kind of built its own okay. game around it in first class. And what's really cool about first class is it has all these different modules that you can mix and match. Yep. So every time you're playing first class, it is a different experience. Mm -hmm. But that feeling of comboing is always central. You're moving your train down the line. You're getting rewards. You're using those rewards to move your conductor, to flip over the value of train cards, to yep. get objective points. Like it, there's just so much happening on your turn. It's one of those games where you start off doing like a few actions. And then by yeah. the end, you just feel yeah, like you're like this grandmaster. Yeah, you are grand. Yeah, that's, that one's... That was an interesting one because that was one of those early first in gaming type games as well. Yeah. Like I was just newer to the game industry at the time and I was doing demos for that one as well. Really, really interesting design. And it's got to be hard to find now. Like It should be. Like uh, yeah, is, but it, I, I bet feel it like is. that game is gone. Like I, yeah, I'm glad you brought that one back up. Yeah, so. 29. I mean, it, it, that was that was one where I was like, I almost yeah. felt like it probably could have been a little higher, but yeah. it's, it's it's too list. late now. It's a, we it's got too it on, late now. We got it on record. 29. Now. It's too late now. So uh, 29 for me is Cthulhu Death May Die. It's absolutely fun every time. Don't care about Cthulhu. Don't don't. I just don't even care about the theme. But that game is absolutely ridiculous. Generally, you're going through these scenarios. They're, uh, you know, one an hour, one hour and a half scenarios. And I mean, you're just, you're chucking dice, you're making easy moves, and you're going insane. And the more insane you go and the more you risk it, the more powerful you get and you upgrade your characters in a very fast way. So it's it's actually, a lot of the ramp up comes quick. And then when you get to a certain point, the, the big boss could be Cthulhu, Nosgoth, mm -hmm. like any of these different things. Billy, uh, Billy, you know, the goat, like the goat. Uh, 
So they have all these different things and they come down and it, it like ramps up the whole situation. And by that time, you've got cooperation to the point where you're chucking like nine dice and like hoping that everything comes together at the end of the game. I love the game and it's not just, you know, stick it to them, whatever. You actually have different things that you need to do in different scenarios. It's not just kind of like straight, you know, hey, move here and then just wait for Cthulhu and do it. There's there's a lot of different scenarios that they actually do make you cooperate in different things. So in I'm different gonna, ways. I'm gonna be a little honest with you. I've only played that game one time. Oh wow. So if I had played it more, it probably would have ended up on this list. Yeah. Also, that's one of my biggest FOMO moments. Okay. I cannot believe that I, I should have backed this game. Like it, it's actually one of the regrets that I have oh, that I didn't man. because I, that one play that I played I loved. Yeah. And I love the whole concept like the way they present this game, like a noir mm -hmm. TV show, like you're picking yeah. an episode, like you're grabbing a VHS tape almost yes. and sticking in an old episode. And like, that is such a cool it concept. It is such a cool concept. And I think that's why I love this so much. I love it so much is because of the time, the time it presents itself in and all the characters that they have. By the way, if you have the Unspeakable Box and season two, you have so much to choose from. And the Unspeakable Box is really hard to find. I got Don't very lucky. Me. I got very lucky when I got that game and I got all the content and it was like for like 120 bucks. Wow, that's a steal. Yeah, I, I know. Could do I got, that now, like, I would. The unspeakable box alone is like 300 dollars I should, on the I just market. still I cannot believe I didn't back that one. Yeah, what you got? All right, 28 for me, Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's now, Wall. This yeah. is a game I actually thought might have been higher on my list. It was really high in my top 10 of the year last okay. year. Yeah. I love Hadrian's Wall, but when I you look too. at top 50, man, all these games I love. Yeah, so it's really hard. It's really, really hard to, to rate these, but Hadrian's Wall, again, Combo City. You're yeah. just, you're checking off these boxes. It's a roll and write, and every box you check off is giving you other boxes to check off. But what's really cool about this game, unlike some other roll and writes, is it has actual components as well. Right. You're grabbing meeples, you're grabbing stone, you're spending those meeples to take other actions, you're spending that stone to build Hadrian's Wall, which I found out that some people weren't aware it's an actual wall. I, yeah. I was there. I just In fact, thought, I, hey, I may right, have right. some video content coming soon. About that, um, but you're you're you know historically building that wall, and it just it's deeply satisfying. Yeah, I remember the first time I ever played it was with you. And yes. we played it like just yes. several times in a row. Yeah, we, we just we actually it. we played it the whole weekend. I think I don't know if that was the only game we played, but I feel like that's the only game we played. Right, it's so good, so <laughs> it definitely I feel like deserves a, a spot in my top fifty, yeah. right there, kind of in the middle, number twenty eight. This game used to be a top twenty game, and I, oh, it dropped. It, it it dropped, but I. It is such a strong title. Like the titles that are ahead of this game will just show you how strong I feel about these, this game. It's like, man, how did this drop this far? Well, there's some titans ahead of it. And that is Yokohama. Oh, it yeah. You, do, you love that game. I love that game so much. I love I'm Yokohama. I'm surprised it's not I'm higher. so surprised it's not I my really top 20 am. either. I, I tried. I tried many ways of flipping it games, and I was like, not in front of that. Nah, not in front of that. Yo, I'm special. <laughs> no, I'm, it's hard for me to say it that it's not my top 20. It's hard for me to say it, but I tested it to several times. That's the hardest thing about making these lists, man. It was man. so hard because I have to make choices. And when I made those choices, man, I, Yokohama, it's been around since 2016. Uh, you're basically moving your guys around and trying to fulfill orders for that specific area. I guess like that's the best way to say it. Um, but yeah, it's like a conversion of resource stuff. They have a dual version of this game, by the way. Yeah, two-player duel. Yeah. I haven't played it. It might be better than the actual game. Oh, really? It might be better than the actual game. It's 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 smaller. It just kind of feels a little bit more streamlined. It feels like that was what it was made to be. Uh, yeah. I haven't played Yokohama since 2016, actually. Yeah. It's been a while for me, but I, yeah. I love that game. God, I love that game. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's, it's a fun game. Like, well, it's a, it's a great game. Yeah. we. I remember just playing the dual version with mm -hmm. my, my friend, and I was just like, yeah, this is one of my favorite games. I love that game. All right. 27. Yeah. 27 for me is Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion. Another game that really could have been in my top 20, really close to making that cut. I had a few that just, just came under the top 20, but Star Wars Rebellion is a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the only re like drawbacks for me is, is the length and how hard it is to get to the table because yeah. it is... It's a two-player game that can last about three to four hours. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to IP games, this is one of the best games. Yeah. When you're playing this game, it literally feels like you're playing Star Wars. Yeah. And you know, one, one side is playing the Empire, one side is playing the Rebellion. You have asymmetric abilities, asymmetric win conditions. The Empire is literally hunting the Rebellion. Yeah. And what I love is that the Rebellion has so, so little at the start, but they can really build 
Well, as the empire starts with a lot and keeps kind of getting dwindled down by these little engagements, mm -hmm. and you can have these authentic Star Wars moments that just play out organically because of the way you're playing cards and taking yeah. actions. You can do the Death Star rum and fail. And then the Empire can blow up your planet and you lose. Whoa. So it, it just it, it lets you replay the movies, but with your own kind of twists. Okay. With your kind of controlling the plot. Yeah, it's, okay. it's so good. Never played any it's of those so games. It's so good. Not that I haven't given it a chance. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but like... I always want to try these things because of gameplay. Like, we're going to be talking about other games like that where I don't care about the theme at all, just like Cthulhu Death May Die. But it's like, if it's a yeah. good, solid game... Take I'm... Star Wars out of the equation. Yeah. It still has this epic space opera yeah. feel. And you get to make these decisions that the consequences feel really big in the scale of the game. Yeah, something about board games that allows me to do that. It's like, I don't care about this I think you love it, man. But then sometimes, just in the feeling of, like, mm -hmm. this is still like space opera, like, you might enjoy right. it, right? Um, big one. Big designer, Lacerda. Yeah, okay. Kanban. Yeah, that, yeah. that deserves it. Kanban. That deserves uh, a spot. Kanban is, is, is up there. Uh, that game I hadn't played until last year at the beginning of the year. And uh, it was one of the last Lacerdas I owned. And I was just like one of the last in my collection of Lacerdas. And I was, I am, I was shocked. I mean, I played really? that for a couple weeks. Yeah. Like, I was, like, way high on it. Uh, I was so high on it. And I was just like, well, this game is a gift that keeps on giving. So it basically goes through uh -huh. the factory process of a car. Uh, it, and you are basically being watched over by someone. It's not Sandra, Sandra, yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, you're watching over Sandra, the taskmaster, making sure you're doing your task. But you're moving down these different spots. You have uh, different tracks that you're going on as well. It's even got these nice metal cars that kind of come off the line. So you get this nice little feel of the theme going on. It is a masterful design. Like that is, it's, that is a master. That is like, oh, man, that is a, uh, that's a damn good game. Com bro. Combat is a great game. It's <laughs> yeah. it's an incredibly challenging game. Yes, it is. And, and what you said is exactly right because it is so challenging that when you get done playing it, by the end yeah. of the game, you're like, okay, yeah. All right, let's play it again. Yeah, like, like now, not like yeah. let's, let's do like, it again. Hey, I get it now. I got it now. <laughs> let's play this again. You know, like yeah, it's not. You're not going to play the same in the same night though. Let's be clear. <laughs> uh, no, but we played it the next day, <laughs> yeah. so that's happened before. Let's be clear. It's, it's not a life filler. <laughs> It's not. It's, it's not, not a, it's not not a, a thinking filler, filler folks. Right. It's, it's, it's a heavy. Thing. It's a big heavy it's game. Heavy. Well, okay. So, well, let's go to number twenty six because mine is kind of the same. My number twenty six is Barrage. Barrage. I think that this game is an underrated gem. Yeah. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. get turned off from Barrage because it is a very complex. It game. It is a very complex. It's game. not necessarily complex to to learn, but the entire game is about water flowing down a mountain. And you're building these dams and power plants mm -hmm. trying to generate hydroelectric power. Yeah, yeah. And what's really interesting about the game to me is that as you're building these dams and hydroelectric plants, you're sucking water, water. out of these plants. dams yes. into these other, and then they're they're flowing. So you're effectively controlling and diverting yeah. this flow of water. But what if happens if I need that to keep going? Right, exactly. <laughs> then it doesn't matter because I just diverted <laughs> it away from And it allows these cool moments like that where you're really having to Having to outthink oh, and outplay your opponents. I, I mean, and you could get destroyed. Like, there could be a part where you literally own the board. There can. And, like, and that's I, why I, I think people I've don't done like it. Before. <laughs> Woo! It hurts. Like, I've, I've done it, it too. And I'm hurts. Like, and it's like, but it you has to stop happen. me. You, you have to stop, stop me. it. But you can feel it building up. Mm -hmm. But you've got, uh, man, that game is really smart. But it is for the people who are really heavy gamers it's, because it, you can. Uh, you can get a front runner thing going well, and on. And it's where difficult people don't know how to play. your first yeah. time to play. It's difficult yeah. because you don't see that coming. Right. And next thing you know, the guy next to you is just dominating the just game. Dominating like, how did you game. even yeah. do that? But it takes a play to really get. That game is excellent. I agree. Excellent. That's why it's on my list. I agree. But not in my top 50. No, well, you know. Oh, I thought about I, I'm it. Too. Not, I'm I not thought about it. It's not on I thought about 15. it so hard. But there is one game I don't have to think about. Is that, that was my number two game from 2021. That is Solomon Kane. Uh, yeah. Solomon Kane it was, is a very special game. Uh, to have a game like that kind of like fly right into my top 25 from last year is pretty big. That game was, made a huge impact on me. And you're actually playing out a story of Solomon Kane, which is a character uh, from a very popular run of. It's, is it like comics? Is that. Was it comics? That was books. It was, it was Robert like e. inside Howard Robert novels. E. Howard books. Like, like, I didn't know if it was novels or in the back mm -hmm. of like a. Whatever. Uh, back of the magazine. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there might but, have been, but, I don't but know. anyway, yeah, they're short stories, and you're playing those out. You're like watching over them as these, like these 
people of light, trying to keep them on the path. It's got some really thematic stuff and it, it has like a very well written story that gets you really into the theme, but really you're watching over them and controlling different things on your board. And there's certain ways that you play where you can only influence him sort yeah. of a certain way. You're sharing a pool of dice. So you know what the heck's going, you know, so you have to kind of communicate of how you're going to distribute your actions. Very, very fun game. I've played it mostly solo too. So if you want to play it solo, you're going to have a hell of a time. You can even play as the darkness if you wanted to. I have not experienced yeah, that. A lot of different you game have a, modes. quite a few ways. This one, you can soak up a game night quite easily. You can do it, you know, do a short one, or you can kind of do like a campaign where you play two acts and have two long game nights. So it has range that way, and I like that a lot. Your enthusiasm for Solomon Kane is what got me into yeah. playing Solomon <laughs> Kane. So thank you for that. I mean, and there is problems galore with the rules and their a cards lot of missing. Errata, card a lot fixes. of I don't. You know what? I, you said that, but it wasn't that difficult no, for me. It wasn't that difficult to figure it all out and to get the new cards. It wasn't just, a big you deal. You just apply the yeah. rule of like whatever screws me over the worst. Yeah, <laughs> like basically, that's just apply that rule. All right, all right. Number twenty-five for me. This is a game. It's a, it's actually not quite out yet, but it's about to deliver. And I've played it enough that I can solidify. This is a top 50 choice for me. This is Weather Machine from Lacerda. Okay, I'll let you have it. You, you better <laughs> let me have it because this Weather Machine yeah. is so, so good. It's, I mean, it's, it's very good. And for me, a person that does really like theme. How dare you? This is number 25. You put it that high. It, How dare you? Put it you, that Ryan? high? How dare you? It could have been not higher. Even out. How dare you? So I, you have a good point, and we say this all the time. Like I need a, <laughs> The problem is I need to play a game no, a certain amount of times. Okay. But no, the version but, of Weather Machine that we no, played was a final no, copy. No, it was a final copy, And I've basically. played it six times yeah. already. And so like I'm yeah. like, this is a game that I will continue to play. I will Like any it. Lacertas, I will play Weather Machine almost any time somebody says, hey, you want to play Weather Machine? Yeah. Yes, I do. Let's get it to the table. It's, it's got it's, like a mix of his, his stuff, too. It does. It's it has got a like mix. A you can, you've mix got a little bit of like... Combo, but what yeah. I what I like about Weather Machine is that Latif, yeah, his Lativ. you know, yeah. his is the scientist. I'll let you figure that one out. Lativ. Kind of follows you around, mm -hmm. but he only helps you. Yeah, really, he benefits you. Yeah, and there's this idea of like pushing him along so that he gets back to yes. his study because when he gets back to his study, that's when he pays you. Yeah, and so you really, it's this really interesting cycle of actions, and some actions gain you vouchers, some actions cost vouchers. There's so many balancing acts. Happening. This is an immediate instant hit for me. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it could be your favorite Lacerda, but it could be. People could be it could be people's it favorite. It can Lacerda. definitely be my like, favorite. It has Lacerda. that potential. It is that good. It certainly. Uh, I mean it is there's good. a lot of great Lacertas, but this I don't wanna get I don't wanna go a little that far, but I'm just I had to bite you see how I was looking off the camera a little bit. I was like, <laughs> I don't know if I wanna say this, but I came from my heart so All right, what's your twenty five? Uh, next one is one of the what I call the ultimate games as far as uh, abstracts. It's one of the ones I stick my neck out for. And that's Azul. Um, Azul. Yes, we would, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Azul, um, you, when you're talking abstracts, it is one of the you know one of the highest echelons of them. It is a modern classic game. Azul will be around forever. I, I would say with a strong presence in places that you don't even see games. Uh, that game, it's hard to just sit and talk about it forever because I just love abstracts. Yeah. But uh, Azul. And the day I played it, I was like, this is like a forever game. This is like yeah. you and your, you know, your spouse favorite game. This I'll be, I'll be a grandpa playing Yeah, you and your grandpa playing with the kid. <laughs> yeah, like I just feel like that's what that's that what that has that kind of potential. It's and it's interesting to see a game like that hit like that. It's yeah. Like, it's like, hey, this game will be you you gotta you get a feeling, you're like, this game will really be around and present forever yeah just, it's a, yeah i mean i don't know i don't see this game leaving print it's a beautiful game by the way and i think it's a really great game to give to someone so as a gift and that's one of those things it's like hey this is a beautiful gift well speaking of beautiful they have that like chocolatier edition yeah and i'm getting the too. chocolate edition i actually got that, rid of that I, looks beautiful i actually got rid of my base one to get the chocolate dish. i don't know why I, I don't know why whatever all right what are we at 24 yeah 24 for me is Fantasy Realms. Wow. Another game yeah. that could have been in my top 20, that yep. maybe should have been in my top 20, but it just kind of eked out a little yeah. bit. Fantasy Realms is so great because you can just pick it up at any time. It's like yeah. a 30-minute game. Yeah. And again, it's this hand management game where you're trying to create these combos of cards. Not what you think of as like traditional combos where one thing makes another thing happen, but where your cards get more points for other cards in your hand. So you're looking at like, almost like a a tableau builder, a hand management game, yeah. where you're trying to draw cards and draft cards to, to make the perfect hand 
to score the most amount of points. And it gets kind of crazy. Yeah. You've got cards that are like plus 20 if you have yeah, this card, have but not that card. Right. And like plus 50 for every, you know, weather card you have in your hand. Or like all these different suits, all these different it's, wild effects. It's all, and he's, super cool. He's saying all these things. And it's like you really only do one, <laughs> one thing well, or the other thing right, on your turn. You just, you're picking up a, <laughs> picking card, up a card. That's it. It's awesome. Pick up a card, card, discard a card. Discard, discard that's, a card. That's it. But it's, it makes it so easy to it teach. Is. But the, the fun of the game is looking at that hand. Yeah. That's like it. that's that's so satisfying. Buy the game. Like I always tell them, like those are the types of games where I'm like, just buy the game. And I had a couple on my list, like they're just small card games yeah. that you can get up and play. And those are the ones where I always tell people, like, just buy this game. Trust me. Well, and there's a, there's a uh, Marvel version coming out, the oh, Fantasy yes, Realms Remix, remix with, yeah, which remix. is all Marvel so, yeah, characters. There you go. If you like Marvel. I will be yeah, getting that, yeah, I can I'll tell you. I will be getting that one as well. Uh, so next one on the list is, well, <laughs> Lacerda again. Yeah, um, and this one was my first Lacerda, and it is still near and dear to my heart. It used to be one of my top ten games. What is it? Let's... The Gallerist. Oh, yeah. The okay. Gallerist. Yep, that's yeah. a great one, too. Who cares about uh, art galleries? That was my first Lacerda, Anybody too. care? Do you care about art no, galleries? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, sometimes I used to take women on dates back in the day. <laughs> Uh, but I don't care about the career track of an artist. <laughs> right, right. I don't, right. Like, what a, I don't what a weird thing. <laughs> but I love that in this game. Like, there's a thematic run to this this experience and how you keep people relevant in a sense for how low so you can score. But then also the contracts that they have, plus your gallery. You got to gather these people around, get them in yeah. there so they can see your stuff. What a game. And I, I could go on for that one forever, trust well, yeah, me. Yeah, and I, but, I, a classic Lacerda, it's like... It's a worker placement game where there are yeah. four worker placement spaces. But, oh, yeah. You're just like, one of these, take one of these four actions. But after that. <laughs> but after yeah, that. Each action or, has two options. Right. There's a bunch of executive two actions, actions you can take. It's the introduction to that. And uh, that one blew my mind when you I know, first started playing. It was one of my first solo games. It was one of my first. It was my first Lacerda game. Okay. Also, I think it is a great place to start. If you're yes. listening to our list, you're probably going to hear Lacerda a lot. I bet yeah. Emily's not on this video. Yeah. I bet she has some Lacerdas in her top 50 as well. So if you're wondering where to start, Gallerist is a great place. Yeah, it, it is a great place to start. As a matter of fact, that's exactly where I would go as well. What do you got? All right. What, 23, right? Yeah. 23 for me is Pulsar 2849. Ooh. Ooh. A cl like what I would consider now to be like a classic uh, Suhi game, Ooh. Vladimir Suhi, who did you know Underwater Cities. Oh, I like it. Whatever. Yeah. Pulsar, it's a space game for yeah. one. I love it, but I love the dice drafting in this game. Like there are, there's so much to do, and you're using dice for all of it. You're moving your spaceship around. You're building up these like space satellites. You're yeah. upgrading technologies. You're trying to complete all these different objectives. Like there is so much happening, but the core of the game is to explore these planets. And to leave these pulse like these rings around the pulsars, which you can then turn on for points. Yes. And again, there's a lot of combos here. You can research these technologies oh. that say whenever you do this, also do this. It boosts some of your abilities. You can get special dice. Like yes. There's so much going on in this game. That engine going, man. I guess that engine. I you know how when we're playing a Suchi game, I always say it's so Suchi. It's it's, it's so it's, Suchi. It, is, like, and then, it feels good when we have your moment where you're pulling off combos, and every time I pull off a combo in this game, I always say so Suchi. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite designers, so it's not a surprise that his name appears multiple times on this yeah. list, but Pulsar, and this one surprised me, actually. Yeah. This is one like Your Yokohama that I thought was going to end up being in the top yeah. 20 or 15, even. These these last three, it's just like, whew, yeah, wow. it was tough. Uh, so, the next one up is Smartphone. Smartphone, no. I love that game. I didn't, re I didn't realize oh, you had man. that. I, mean, I, I love, like it. I absolutely love Smartphone. But I have to have it at higher player counts. And but in that game, you're basically like in a cell phone company or whatever, and you are trying to basically determine prices so you can buy and sell it to the right pe to sell to the right people. Make sure you have enough goods and raise your technologies and different types of technologies to fulfill the requirements for people across the world. And you'll be moving and putting your influence in different areas and stuff like that and selling phones. But the claim to fame on this game is just these pads that you get that make up your actions and you have to place them in certain ways mm -hmm. in order to like make the actions. And I mean, pretty much, if you didn't know, have any context of what people are doing when you come up to the table, they're kind of like, <laughs> everybody's just kind of, <laughs> wait, uh, uh, well, you know, <laughs> put that on top, I don't know. You know, like, so that's that's the, you know, interesting thing about that game uh, is that action system yep. that you're creating. And I, I, I never get tired of playing that game, never. <laughs> All right, 22. 22 for me is Paladins of the West Kingdom. This okay. is 
the middle game of the West Kingdom trilogy, hmm. which, you know, the North Sea trilogy, I didn't love all three games, but the West Kingdom trilogy, I did. Yeah. I could have had all three of them on my top 50, but okay. they didn't quite make it. Okay. But Paladins did. Paladins is a game I can always come back to. I love the variability of, of the way the game plays out based on the objectives that you have, plus the order that the Paladins come up. Mm -hmm. you, you have these choices to make uh, out of which Paladin to play, and every Paladin powers a different action, makes it better or cheaper. So the order that you're playing those actually determines kind of the order that you want to yeah. do. And so you can't just stick to one strategy in Paladins. You have to play to the Paladins that you have. You have to play to the objectives. Yes. And then, of course, with the new expansion, you have, like, the Diplomats, all these new cards to manipulate, and you're still, you know, placing workers, collecting workers. There's nothing more satisfying to me in a game like Paladins than playing your Paladin card, getting that Town card, and then just getting yeah. that stack of meeples yeah. to play out. It's just really satisfying yeah. feeling. It's a satisfying game. It's very satisfying. It's a very satisfying game. I love Paladins. I will be playing that one well into the future. 23. Ryan, how about we stay in the same universe there, the same kingdom? How oh, yeah? About that? Architects of the West Kingdom. Okay. Now, that I, that, that could have been on my list. Now, if you watched our chit-chat not too long ago, I didn't like this game. <laughs> and I didn't, well, I shouldn't say I didn't like it. I just was not as excited about it as everyone else. And then they started to add these expansions to it. Yeah. And it went higher and higher. And it became one of my favorite worker placement games. Like, it just, it, it's it's got some... It's got some cool kind of building up kind of uh, re to it, and it has the interaction that I like. I can hold your workers. Yeah, that whole like prisoner jam. mechanic. Like, yeah, but then like the wonders definitely pr present something different, and I didn't like the way the end game trigger worked before. I felt like everybody was chasing that that church tower, yeah. whatever. Well, I mean, once you play it more and more, you get away from that. But this new stuff, it, it puts you in. You got to build these nice little wonders going on, and then you have uh, the the other expansion where you have a, a kind of some other different choices going on. I'm not going to go too deep in it, but I just find that this game is a gift that keeps on giving for yeah. me. The expansions really got me back into it, and just a little time away from it really made me appreciate this design so much so that it's here uh, in, in my list. So yeah, you know when I I just got back from vacation and my architect's big box with the wonder expansion was waiting okay. for me. So I actually haven't played that one yet. I okay. hear that from a lot of people that that yeah that, that like, elevates yeah it does elevate because the, the difference from base to that first expansion mm -hmm. was huge. Yeah. And if this jump is as huge, yes. Maybe I'll be rethinking this after I played the new expansion. Because we played it at the Columbus Con, and I was kind of resistant, but the people were so nice. And then I was just like... At Buckeye Game Fest? Yeah, and I yeah. was just like, wow, this game is great now. Yeah, it's great. All right, number uh, number 21. 21. 21. Right. Uno. Number 21 for me is The Magnificent. Yeah. This is a another game. <laughs> we got a lot of dice dice drafting. So if you see, there's a lot of dice drafting on my list. <laughs> But you're, you're drafting these dice to run like a dark carnival. Yeah. And I love that theme. I yeah. love the way that this game looks. The artwork is great. I love great. the art, yes. But you're using these dice to like, you have that little um, uh, camp mechanic where you're building out your camp with these colored yeah. pieces. And it almost feels like a Rosenberg game where you're covering things yes. up. Yes. You're moving your wagon to collect things. You're scheduling performers. And it has that satisfying buildup yeah. of like, you're, you're running a few acts at the beginning for a little bit of points, but then by the end, you're running these yeah. huge acts, you're getting a ton of points, and you just feel like that really satisfying sense of buildup and that scoring mechanic where you have powers in front of you. Yeah. And every time you use a die, you get to use one of the powers, but those cards are also your scoring yes. cards. So once you score a card, you no longer have the power. Yeah. So it's a very, it's a very, very interesting game. And again, another one that was made better by the expansion. And it just... That's a, it's just unfortunate. Like a lot of people don't talk about it as much. But like I said in another video, I mean, we were recording all day. I have sure. no idea which video it was. I know it was high though. Or the order, yeah. But I will uh, once again. I have to say this: definitely a game that is going to be on sale now because it's past you know past six months sure. old. You know, uh, and I feel like if it's on sale, you should just give it get a the, shot. If you give like dice shot. placement yeah, games, if you like dice placement games, games get, like, that's, get that's the one, that's and It's so good. Um, this game, it's, it was right there. This game was right there. Okay, right there. As a matter of fact, this is like my, one. Of, we're getting into like my top twenty right yeah. now. We're getting to my top twenty. A lot of card games in the top twenty. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you ready for the top twenty. Okay. But this game, I actually, there's nothing wrong with this game that I'm about okay, to talk about. Okay, you're getting about. a lot of build up. I am doing a lot. I'm sorry, I'm doing a lot of build. Uh, <laughs> Empire of Settlers, Empire oh, of the North. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's. there's Literally nothing wrong with this game. As a matter of fact, I did not like Imperial Settlers. I kind of died on it. Um, I completely died on it. 
But this one here, there's something about the way this, this, this table builds up. There's something about uh, just that kind of that engine that you can create with each one of these decks, and they have so much personality, so much personality in them. And then they even have like these little scenarios they created, and they just keep going into it, and it feels so much fun and different every time. I just had taught, taught someone this last night, or helped, I should say, assist someone last night, and I looked at a game, and I was just like, Yes, there's still, I still feel like there's nothing wrong with this game. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're actually going into some more campaign stuff. Well, that sounds uh, I think later on this year. I, think, I know there's a, a scenario box that's coming, a campaign box that's coming. So like Imperial Settlers, you'll get a little bit more to it, but it's not just beat your score. It's a little bit more thematically written and stuff like that. So I'm very excited about you it. You know, this is another game, i got to be yeah. honest, another game that I bought into yeah. because of your enthusiasm. Yeah. For it. When you started playing this on your yeah. solo streams... And just loving it so much, I went out and got it, and I haven't regretted it. Oh, man. What a game. Yeah. And that's not in my top 20, That's dude. surprising. I me. know. That's crazy. Well, I, all of these, all 10 of these games, yeah. I'm like, these could have been top 20. Right. Just, just, just there's a small, small difference. This is so close. Just a little bit. So thank so you. Close. Thank you so much for watching. That was yeah. 30 through 21. Be sure to take a look. David and Emily are doing yeah. their 30 through 21 yeah, as well. Check out all of our top videos, especially our our, our top ten. Yeah, That's the one you don't definitely, want to miss. Please, so. uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos. We're working our butts off trying to get these done. Making these them. are a lot of fun. You know, I'm just getting tired. It's been a long, yeah. It's 50 games to talk about. Yeah. That's great. 50 games for each of us. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm still having a good time. So. This is this is awesome. Yeah. So thank you all so much, and we'll see you in the next video.